make the story short, um, as all you guys know, I had a car accident, and then all I wanted is to help my dad and support my dad for the mission. And then, car accident, doctors, they told me that I have something on my brain, and I told God, um, God, I give you my life. Amen. Whatever you wanted me to do, I'll just follow. And then, for some reason, I told myself, God, do you want me to go back home? And I just want to see my grandma, because I grew up with her, and because the calcification in my brain, that could, you know, that could be something else, like six months from now, or one year from now. And then I told dad, oh, I'm gonna go with you to the mission. Amen. And then my sister Irish came with me, my boyfriend came with me, and then we all did the mission. One week before we went, I received a letter from ESCIS, and then they're telling me that I have an interview for the green card, which is, I've been waiting for that for like eight years since I got here. And then I was like, God, what do you want me to do? Should I go back or should I just stay here? And then I told myself, okay, God, um, whatever you wanted me to do, I'll just follow again. If you decided, just I'm just, if I'm just gonna stay there, it's it's fine, it's okay with me. And I just give my, you know, just keep my faith to God that everything's planned for me. Everything's planned. Whatever, um, whatever's gonna happen in the Philippines, I will, I will be able to come back here. I know it's God's plan. So we did the mission. I went. To first we went to Davao, and then not know, my dad's been telling me, oh, you have to pray hard because you don't know if you're going to be able to come back. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep my faith. And this, and I told my dad, it's God's plan, God's plan. So we went to Cebu, and we went to Davao. First, we, we had the service, just a small um, church there. Um, they don't speak Agalo, they speak Messiah. But like the way they sing, the way they they preach, the way they they do the the singing part, it's on Desire too. But like looking at them doing it with the kids, grown ups, I feel so blessed because they're dancing with the song. It's like God is there, and I'm so blessed because I get to see the God's work in their lives, and I'm very thankful because I listen to God that. And not just go home, like you know. And then that's what God wanted me to see and wanted me to experience. It's very life changing. I don't know. Um, the accident doesn't have to happen for me able to see what God is giving me for my life, what I have right now and what I don't have. But to make the story short again, it's very long. We went to, we went, we had the Christmas party, and then. The pastors, family pastors, went to the to the city, and then they're they're thinking they're they thanking God because because of him they get to see the city. And I'm like, okay, that's their dream, like just to go to the to Davao, the main city. And then for me here and everyone else, I don't know. I'm actually complaining for what I don't have, but they're they're just happy for going there, and. I'm like, oh, okay, Lord, I think the lesson is just be thankful for what you have. Amen. And just, and then one more thing, when we went to, like, Isla Verde, the kids there, I, I asked them, uh, how come you're not going to school? They're like, oh, because we have to eat free food first before we go, and we go after lunch. And then, you know, their food, they just put, like, so much rice and then soup and a tiny piece of fish. And then over here, I'm like, I pick what I eat. I watch what I eat. I, have, I eat five times a day. They're, they're very, like they had to miss school just to get food. And I'm like, um, that's another lesson for me and for the team. Then when we did the, when we did the medical mission, there's one family, there's five kids or four, and then the grandma, the grandma's telling us in Bisaya that the mom passed away and the kids like been sick and been crying. I'm trying to help out the kid, but she won't stop crying. Over there, the medications, they don't even check as long as it's medicine, they will take it. 
They don't know if, if, if they're allergic to it, they don't mind. They don't even know how to use the medicine, they will just take it. You know, and here at my work, we destroy everything, we just throw it away. In the Philippines, even though it's expired, they say that the doctor said it's still fine. And then we went to our mom stepping out, like what my sister said, they're telling me. The feeling of like seeing, I don't know how to do What do you call that? The station, the, the boat station? Yeah, yeah, it looks like they haven't recovered yet. Like they don't want to move on, but seeing the, the people in the market, they started selling food. We're all like trying to work things out. And then when we went to the place where we were gonna give out the groceries, all we wanted to do is just to help and help. Even though it's late, we feel like we just wanted to stay and help. I don't have electricity, but they're still cooking food for the next day. I feel so blessed for the workers that who is there that's preparing everything for for um for the for the the next day's occasion for the work of God. They had to stay late. They had to cook food with no lights on. They had to prepare everything so we can give out the reliefs to the people that who's in need. And then we went there the next morning. At first, kids and then adults. And then um, next thing we know, our sleepers are all gone. And then the kids are going back and forth. And then we're like, oh, we gave you sleepers already. They're like, no, but they're trying to like change their hairstyle. They're changing clothes. But their kids, they're asking for slippers. And we can't we can't say no to them. It's just slippers, but you know, they're saying, Ate, Ate, can we just get one slippers? Because my brother is sick and he couldn't make it here. And I can't say no. I just have to give it to her. After I can get some lugao, but decide I'm hungry. Like looking at their faces, at, at the very young age, like they don't even have a mom or a dad, or maybe like I think we have to call them because some of the kids there, their families are really bad, you know, are really gone. So, I told myself when I came, when I come back here, I'm very blessed. I still have a mom and a dad. I think we are, my nieces, my nephews are still here with me. Because they're they're just I don't even know how they're gonna survive. Like this one kid, like I'm like, where's your mom? She's gone. Like where do you live? Nothing. 